everyone. Welcome to our discussion about educational technology on module number three, non-digital and digital skills and tools in delivering technology enhanced lessons. For today's topic, we will discuss about the lesson number three, creating a portfolio as a technology tool. To start our discussion, our learning outcomes will focus on to explore the use of a platform such as a Google site. And then we're going to identify and describe the Gibbs reflective cycle and its six stages. Particularly in our discussion in this topic, we will explore an e-portfolio using a Google site. As a teacher and as a student, there are things that we need to really arrange in order for us to become productive in everything that we are doing for academic purpose and other things. Do we need to be organized? In order to do that, we need to document our learning and we will create an e-portfolio. What is an e-portfolio? An e-portfolio is like a portfolio in a in a uh, electronic electronic portfolio. The purpose is that it can evaluate students' academic progress, and it is also a portfolio's document students' learning growth. In an e-portfolio, it's easy for us to to see or to, to observe or to evaluate our progress because it's well arranged and everything is uh, um, well in place. So in creating an e-portfolio using a site, in this particular discussion, we will use the Google site and we will use our Google account in order to explore and to create an e-portfolio. The picture in your left or in my right is an example of, of an e-portfolio where um, all the things that we have as a subcopy can be organized in our computer or in our laptop. Next slide. So in constructing an e-portfolio, we're going to start with entering your Gmail account and look for the Google site. So you just have to turn on your internet and um, open your Google account and then search for the Google site, one of the application of the Google. <coughs> I'm sorry. So here we have an example of a screenshot of a uh, Google site encircled in red. So once you will find that Google site, start exploring and create your own e-portfolio. So <clears throat> parts of an e-portfolio, we have here a pages tab. Um, there are some page that can be hidden or a publish view, and we can also add a new page. Then we can access individual page uh, settings. So uh, basically the uh, Google site is very user friendly and um, easy to use or easy to um, manage. So one of the main parts of, or one of the main part of the e-portfolio is the home page. In this part, you can have your uh, introductory um, statement regarding your e-portfolio. So I have here an example, a screenshot of a sample e-portfolio that I, I, I create earlier, <coughs> sorry, where uh, I said here that I, um, a student in this, um, in certificate of teaching. So we have here, 
um, some pictures of this uh, Google site ePortfolio creator. So slide we have here a uh, some of the pages um, project page in particular where you can create your um, different project or different um, article or activities um, where say you can uh, post it here and then we have an example of a screenshot that I have is uh, educational technology 101 so I have here exploring the technology for education. After you're done with all the activities and uh, create all your projects, a major element of an e-portfolio is what we call reflections. Just like a normal portfolio or normal activities, reflections is very important for us to process the input that we have as an application of the learnings from the activity done. So in this part, uh, you can have a certain page where you're going to write your reflections uh, on your e-portfolio. There's a uh, guide in writing a reflection. We call it as one as uh, Gibbs Reflective Cycle. So this Gibbs Reflective cycle has a uh, six cycle where the uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the creator or the uh, creator of the a portfolio can be guided in what to write or what to do in a reflection. As I said, that reflection is very important uh, for the development of the said a portfolio or the activity um, being created. So this gives reflective cycle, as I mentioned, has six stages. This will make you embrace your own learning and start taking accountability of it. So you may uh, take your copy, snack and hug, and review the day or review the activity that you have. So the first stage is the uh, description. So in this part of uh, the first part of the reflection, is you're going to say something on what you are reflecting about, including the relevant and to the point details. So you may um, answer the question, what happened in the activity? What happened? Everything that happened in the activity. You may write everything uh, relevant and all the details that happened in the activity. The second stage is feelings. <clears throat> Let it out. Discuss your emotions honestly about the experience that you have in that particular activity. So you may uh, um, <clears throat> you get angry or you're happy with that activity, but do not forget that it is part of an academic discourse. So you may limit your emotions specific to that activity. The next stage is evaluation. In this part of the stage of um, the guide of writing a reflection, this part you're going to discuss how will or how will you think the activity went. And also you're going to recall how you reacted to the task or situation and how the others reacted. So in this part, it's important that you really um, look into the details of what went wrong and what went right in order for you to evaluate um, the things that are really important in that activity. The next stage or stages are analysis and then the conclusion. So after you're done with the uh, <clears throat> evaluation and all the things that are necessary in that activity, you're going to analyze of what went work well and what have facilitated it or what may have hindered it activity. So what went wrong, what went right, uh, what are the things that hindered the activity or that or um, hindered the activity to be successful. And then <clears throat> you're going to write what you have learned from that experience or what 
you could have done in order to have a successful activity. But you're doing a good job writing that uh, particular e-portfolio. After all this conclusion, you're going to make an action plan. In this action plan, you're going to write or to take things that you're going to improve. So you may consult to a particular uh, expert on that particular activity or field um, or read some books regarding to, to provide some answers or queries regarding the activity. So the purpose of this action plan is really to improve that activity and uh, <clears throat> also to collaborate, to implement, in order to particularly um, aim that objective. Uh, this is part of this uh, writing the reflection for you to really um, strategize the things that you're going to improve in that particular activity. So, <clears throat> after you're done with uh, those reflections, it is important that when you publish your e-portfolio, you're going to control who can see your work. So, I have here a screenshot of that you may see, that you may see uh, when saving your or publishing your work. So you can see here that uh, when you publish to the web, what are particular website that you're going to publish your work and also uh, how to manage the particular people or institution that can see your work. It's important that you limit or you have to manage the audience of your work. Then the last part in the creating the portfolio is you're going to assist your e-portfolio using a rubric. So it should tell the students the link between the learning or what will be taught and the assessment of or what will be evaluated. It's important that the objective that you have in your activity should be met at the last part of creating your e-portfolio. And this criteria will guide you to attain that uh, task or that standard will um, um, will will guide you or will help you to attain that standard to have a successful um, activity in your particular e portfolio. So, congratulations in creating your own e portfolio, and um, I do hope that you uh, consider all the guidelines in creating your e-portfolio. Thank you very much and have a good day.